Hi, I'm Frank. Today I'm going to be installing a Garmin transducer depth finder and the SeaDo switch. Now, I'll tell you there are two transducers that are available for the switch. The first transducer or depth finder connects to the main panel on your switch where your speedometer is, RPM, uh, and that sort of thing. So that's one transducer. The second transducer can is a Garmin transducer that will connect to your uh, Garmin um, Echo Map UHD. So that's the one I'm going to be installing. When I bought my switch, I ordered the transducer. Well, the transducer that I got was the one that comes for the switch that connects to the main panel, not the Garmin. So my depth uh, readings will only come from the main panel, and I wanted to be able to use the Garmin, which now has a nice little chart plotter and, and plotter for depth. So I'm going to install that. It's not an expensive um, transducer. The one that connects to the um, uh, main uh, console that comes from SeaDo is a more expensive transducer. So it's not an expensive uh, uh, item and it's not a difficult installation. So let's get started. Here is the Garmin transducer. That's the model number. And I'm going to be using this 3M cement to uh, secure the transducer to the hull. We have the transducer and cable, instructions, and there are four transducer mounts. And you can see they go anywhere from flat to very angled. And you need to pick the right one for the hull and the position. I'm going to be using a level to make sure that the, uh, the correct one of these adapters is, uh, or mounts, is uh, the correct one. When you select the right one, and this is now uh, secured to the hull, you're going to fill this with a uh, marine antifreeze. The transducer needs to be in water. Uh, or in a liquid, and they recommend using a marine antifreeze or mineral oil. Uh, I'm using marine antifreeze, but it also means that this underside here that seals against the boat itself, there is a gasket here, but it needs to be sealed uh, properly. So when you use your sealant, be sure to have a liberal amount going around here because now when this is placed against the hull, it needs to be watertight. So uh, make sure that you don't skimp on the, uh, the adhesive. Now I ended up getting two of these just because I thought one, I was afraid one wasn't going to be enough. It probably will be plenty. Um, but I got an extra one just in case. See how this is going to go. Here's the transducer. Here is my mount. I'm going to have the um, O-ring placed in here. I'm not going to place it now because I don't know which one I'm going to use just yet. And then this will go over top and each of these will be screwed down so that this now also becomes watertight. If you notice, there's an arrow on the bottom of the a transducer mount, the one that's going to get mounted to the hull. Regardless of which uh, one you use, there's going to be an arrow. And this is supposed to point to the boat keel. Then notice the arrow on the transducer itself lines up with the arrow on the mount. To install the transducer, we need to take this front section off. That just pops off. We need to 
remove the engine compartment cover, which is just these uh, twist ties there. And we need to remove the seat. So first I'm going to remove the um, decking from around the seat to get access to the, uh, to the screws. There's a cover plate on all four corners of this panel. Basically you can just pop it up. I took a screwdriver and went underneath. I'll show you on this side. And that just pops it up. And then from there I'll just lift it out. Be sure to place them somewhere that you're not going to lose them. I use my famous uh, pool strainer basket to keep everything in. Now once you get all four of those, you're going to undo these two screws, not the other two. The two closest to the outside you don't want to remove, but you will remove these two closer to the engine compartment and then all four of these bolts which are a, a 10 millimeter. And these on the chair are a Torx 30. You can uh, do all of these by hand. Uh, even using a uh, Milwaukee uh, screw electric screwdriver it just makes it a little uh, go a little quicker and easier. Once you have all four of the uh, uh, screws, or actually all six, this now just lifts up and you can remove it and set it aside. The front part of your center console, just grab up in here and pull. There are these two grommets that hold it in and then you just lift it out. On the floorboard, there are two holes. This one's the one that we're going to run our uh, cable up through. Now that we have the section where the chair is removed, we can see where we're going to bring the cable through. Now, this cable right here is your steering cable, so I'm not going to do anything on that side. This has electrical cables coming through. There's a tie wrap right here, so I'm going to cut that tie wrap so, so that'll give me room. I'll bring my cable through there and then I'll put a tie wrap back on. Then we'll route it underneath and up the uh, console. To get the top, this front section off, I'm just going to unscrew this and the one on the other side. And now this section will pull out. And right down there is where we're going to be running our cable through. This one screw will hold this whole thing in. So in order to get better access, I'm going to take that out. This is also a Torx 30. You can see it's a long screw. And this section will just lift and pull out. So this whole thing just pulls out, giving you access to run your wire. For my spot here, in order to know which one to use, we need to measure the dead rise angle. So I'm going to use my iPhone and the uh, angle app that comes uh, with it to determine that. With my iPhone sitting on the deck, I zeroed it. So now with the camera and whatever angle my boat is sitting on the trailer, this is now zero degrees. So now I'm going to move this down to the 
hull and I get 20 degrees. So 20 degrees is going to be my dead rise angle. So according to the instructions, on a boat hull with a dead rise angle between 17 degrees and 25 degrees, you must install the tank labeled 20 degrees. So that's going to be this one, the one that's the most extreme. Now where you see the arrow, that's going to point towards the keel or towards the center of the boat. And since I have an angle, it sits like that, this is going to make this part flush. So the arrow will go towards the center of the boat or the keel. And we will prepare this and get it ready for a bonding. Prepare the hull. The instructions say to use first 220 grit sandpaper to sand the hull where you're going to where you're going to uh, bond the uh, transducer mount. When we put the transducer in, I took the second engine compartment cover off. And when you look down, it's sort of a straight shot right down to get to that uh, that area. So working to put the transducer in and sealing it on the hull is going to be a lot easier rather than trying to uh, to reach down through here, take that second engine compartment off, and just go straight down there. So I have this set down. I'm going to take my phone. And it's showing four degrees. So that'll be good. So I'm going to take a piece of my 220 grit sandpaper and sand the area. Once I have it sanded, I'm going to clean the area thoroughly with 70% uh, isopropyl alcohol on my microfiber towel. So now that the area is clean, remember this part goes up. This part with the grooves goes against the hull. and the arrow points towards the center of the hull, or the keel. So I'm going to go ahead and put my adhesive, and this is what I'm using. I'm using the 3M adhesive sealant, Fast Cure 5200. It's watertight. Uh, it's supposed to be about the best stuff around, so that's what I'm going to use. It is a small tube. I'll probably use the entire tube, but uh, we'll see. The adhesive is applied, and that's how much I put around so it can form a nice watertight seal. And I'm going to place this in the spot I just cleaned on the uh, hull, making note of the arrow to make sure that that goes towards the keel or the center of the boat. It placed, and I'm rechecking it with my uh, iPhone, and it looks pretty darn good. This needs to stay undisturbed now for uh, 24 to 48 hours. So while that's all setting up, I'm going to uh, route the uh, cables. Routed it through here, and I'll pull the cable through, and then it will go up underneath here. If you run your hand and follow the steering cable, you'll come out in that spot right there and you'll just be able to push that cable, Garmin cable through. Now we have to get the cable from there up to the console. The uh, Garmin transducer has an 8-pin connector. The Echo Map HD has a 12-pin connector, so you need to get an adapter cable from Garmin that goes from the 8-pin to the 12 pin because the 12 pin is what's going to plug in. So on the back of your uh, Garmin, the orange is the uh, 12 pin and that's what we're going to plug in. To get this open enough to fish your cables down, 
you have to undo these screws. Now these are called security screws because they have a hole or a little button in the middle. So the driver that you need to use also needs to have a hole in it so that it will go through. Now you can get a set of security uh, drivers from uh, Harbor Freight for like uh, six, seven dollars. So now that I have that wired through here, I need to get it through uh, this part here to this, into the middle of the center console. Then you want to connect the two blue ends. Those are the uh, eight pin connector to each other. Uh, this one from the uh, transducer itself and going up top to the uh, uh, echo chart. To fill the uh, receptor hole in the transducer, the manufacturer recommends using either uh, RV, pool, boat, and seasonal home antifreeze or mineral oil. So I'm going to use the uh, Prestone Marine antifreeze. So I'm going to fill the uh, hole up and I'm going to let it sit uh, probably overnight right now. It's uh, starting to rain here a little bit so I'm just going to fill it up, put a little cover over top of it and make sure that I don't have any leaks. Nice and secure. I'm just going to put a funnel down here to uh, fill this up. I've got the uh, fluid in here and now I'm just going to wait, make sure it retains the fluid and then I'll put the transducer on. It looks like I have a really good, uh, good water seal. This has been uh, overnight. Uh, all the uh, uh, antifreeze is uh, still in place so I know I have a good watertight seal. So now we're going to install the uh, transducer. Be sure to install the O-ring. There's a little notch in there that this O-ring will fit in. And then you're going to put the transducer in and you're going to align the arrow on the transducer. Align the arrow on the transducer with the notch. So you've put the transducer and aligned it. Now we're going to tighten the uh, screws. Don't over tighten, this is plastic, you can break it. But I'm going to do it just like I would a car. So I'm going to do one, two, three, four, five, six. Just like that. Here is my uh, Garmin uh, transducer for the depth. It'll give me my current depth as well as the map. Now, there are lots of different uh, options that I have. Uh, split frequencies and stuff like that. You can find plenty of YouTube videos that will tell you how to interpret that. But there you have it. Now as a comparison, I've got depth on my console which is giving me the 4.8 feet that's the transducer that comes if you order it from SeaDo. So 4.7, 4.8 compared to the transducer for um, the uh, Garmin, 4.5. So they're within uh, within range of each other. But all in all, it's a nice uh, nice addition. Uh, being able to see where your depth is, it'll help uh, for people that like to fish. So uh, it's an easy install, have fun with it.